Okay, welcome back, everybody. Trying to keep everything right on time. 301. Oh, one minute over, but uh, <laughs> all good. So you're about to hear from Chef Alex Hamilton. Uh, he's going to share his kind of approach, his philosophies to using local foods, wild forage ingredients, why that's important, what it results in. And then you're going to taste some stuff too. So it's going to be great. Okay, so wild and local, local kitchen philosophies will optimal nutrition meets culinary cuisine. And uh, yeah, thanks again for being here. It's the variety show. Yeah, a different presentation great. every hour. Yeah, every hour. Yeah, oh, that's great. Right on. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks for coming. I hope this is engaging and uh, a little nervous. I don't know. I get nervous all the time with these things. Uh, but uh, my name is Chef Alex Hamilton. I've been uh, in the restaurant industry for 24 years now, always in the back of house. Um, it turned into a passion. It wasn't a passion at the beginning. It was just kind of something as a job. Um, but uh, I, I've come to know, for me, that food is is health. You know what we we are what we eat, right? And so um, there's a there's a lot of different diets that go around and, and all that. And uh, I was I was working at a, at a artisan sourdough bakery on Vancouver Island when Wheat Belly came out and. The way the way that I, I I read wheat belly was like no human should ever eat wheat you know and I was like well I think ten thousand years of recorded history kind of disputes that uh, and, and so I, I I found that there isn't just like there isn't a single diet that's good for everybody or or, or anything but you know the, the, there are principles that I think that can, we can we can really harness nutritional value you know there there are outliers. Um, for for everything you know raw vegans that, that it really works for uh only carnivores you know things like that but but for the most thing i i think balance is the most necessary uh thing and and, and so i got notes so don't mind me i'm going to look down just because i want to kind of keep on track but uh you know malcolm has a has a class and a discussion about uh ancestral eating right and, and, we, and he puts it into four categories i'm going to do that as, as well you know, it, it's uh, plant, animal, microbial, and fungal. You know, and, and so a lot of the time with these these really uh, these ancestral diets, these are all present. You know, and all in a good balance. You know, because then also we have the four seasons, and, and so I like to look at things eating seasonally as well, right? And 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 so. Uh, on this wheel, though, I'm going to because I'm going to talk about flavor as well. Right. And, and, and so a lot of the time people don't realize that, that there is like um, we have the, the, the four flavor or the five flavors. So we got bitter. We got salty. Salt. We got sweet. We got sour. Right. And then in the middle. With a balance, or you can do it with, with things like like uh, glutamate and uh, like most feel is umami, right? But so if you if you, if you can understand that these balance and these balance, right? A lot of the time people think that sweet balance is bitter, but that's not true. You can have a very sweet, very bitter thing, but if you add salt to it, it will balance that, right? And, and so you can either get this from from things like seaweed, tomatoes. Um, Liver, like like seared meat, because there's something called the Maillard reaction. Um, he was just a chemist in in France, but uh, he was talking about how when you sear meat and protein, or or even like simple carbohydrates, it changes chemically, and then that that, that helps with the flavor, right? And then that that umami comes from Maillard, so grilled meat, that's why grilled meat is so good, right? Is that like, like steamed meat isn't good, grilled meat is. Um, and, and, and so when, when I look at this, th this is a perfect thing, this is gonna go into, into the next presentation as well, right? You know, like, like quadrants for, and, and really, you know, wanna hit this for balance and, and for the greatest flavor. Um, I am gonna, uh, we are gonna pass around some stuff. So food is, is a delivery system, right? For, for nutrients and things like that. I, I think it's been, you know, over, over recent years from big agra to, to big food companies, right? It, it, it's been more of a, 
of a, of a flavor delivery, but not a nutrient delivery. Right. And, and because of, you know, Monsanto, well, uh, <laughs> because of a large agricultural um, industry, right? Uh, the, all, the, like all nutrients have been sapped from the soil, right? So it all starts with soil, you know, like healthy soil creates healthy, healthy balance. And, and so that, that's, that's what I'm talking about local and wild, because a lot of, the, a lot of food is introduced, right? You know, like we don't, like North American indigenous food isn't like onions, carrots, things like that, right? We have things similar to that root vegetables because because if you if you've seen wild ginger before, you get how this has been hybridized over thousands of years in in Asia, right? But like wild ginger is like like a, just a small little root, right? And so that's the, probably the same thing with 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 carrots, with all of these. They've just been very small uh, roots, and then they just get the biggest of all, of all those crops, and the seeds come. And all that, right? And 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 so, um, so we I like to look at it as as we need wild food, but we also need local food that grows well here. And Malcolm had mentioned that this this comes from from uh, Northern Europe, uh, and originally, uh, well, no, this one does, but originally it comes from Northern Europe, right? Like it's indigenous to there, and it's uh, hippo hay. Uh, hippo hay is the Latin word something that and it was named because uh, a Roman general's horses went into this bush and came out and had this like lustrous, very beautiful um, mane. And, and, and so they noticed it. And they're like, oh, OK, cool. And then so they started eating it. And, and it has so many benefits, you know, omega sevens in it. And it, it's if it's not used for food, it's used for beauty products. Right. Like the oil in it is, is, is just very, um, very good anyway. So, so it, it really grows well here as well. There's another one called Hascap Berry that, that is a, a very, very well, very good introduced uh, bush. Uh, and, and it grows very well here, but it was originally in Siberia. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's very spiky. And the thorn is, the, you know, underline the thorn in it, right? But it grows. The, 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 there's, a, there's many different... Um, different spots because the city brought it in because it, it, it grows very like under where like it, the, the erosion, it, it, it helps um, nullify erosion. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. We got a lot of, we got a lot of the good things that, that, that grow here. Um, you know, and, and so there, there's, a, there's a lot of introduce and there's also a lot of wild things that we can eat and, and so I have uh, a mixture. So th so this is something called Ivan's chai. Okay, we're gonna make. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a. It's an Alberta Arnold Palmer um, that I've made here. And, and so Ivan's chai is actually fireweed, and it's been it's been fermented and then dried just like green tea leaves. Um, and it's just a beautiful flavor. I'm gonna send this around, and you can smell. Mm. Oh. It just it has notes of uh, of apricot and and it, it's just a beautiful thing, right? And that's that's something that that we have a lot of access to. Um, and, and so when we look we look at that, and there, there's so many good there, there's so many properties of of it that are that are good. And the, the reason is is that nature, you know, like when when Earth is unmoved and and used for for farming and all that, it's at its you know its its greatest balance, right? And so a lot of the minerals that we're missing in our diet, uh, you know, supplement industry is, is huge here because, you know, like when it comes to industrial agriculture, we don't have, there, there, there's no nutrition value into it, right? And, and so um, when we go foraging, we can add a lot of these, um, these missing, missing in, uh, ingredients in, into our diet. Um, I think we should... We'll, we'll pass this out. So this this is just an example of all of these um, in there. So the, the, these are, and we actually sell them here. These are Montreal smoked beets. We smoke the beets. Oh, and that's actually that is what the so so the last of of the flavor wheel, the very outside, and, and it's just coming into kind of study because umami was discovered in in like nineteen seventy seven. In, like by Japanese scientists were like, this is an actual thing, you know, because uh, 
because even thing like MSG, right? MSG has a very bad rap, but really it came from uh, scraping seaweed salt and, and, and that was added. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of glutamate in it and, and um, it's really good for us actually. But you know, like when in an industrial process, it isn't as good, but it does the same effect as the Japanese cuisine. Um, and, and around that, I like to say is smoke. You know, and smoke is, is the sixth flavor, you know, and, and what that does is it triggers in our like our primordial brain that, oh, yeah, this is cooked. So it is good to eat, you know, and for the most part, when you cook things, it will be good. Um, the, just like the flavor smoke, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Wood. No, no, like like wood fire smoke, so like, like, a, like a smoke, you know, the traditional way, right? And across across ancestry, there, there's been tons of, of things of smoke as preservation method, and also it just. I mean, I don't know, like, I don't know anybody who has come and told me that I don't like the, the flavor of, of subtly smoked things. You know, like almost everybody that I've encountered really does. I mean, there's the, there's the few contrarians that are like, yeah, I don't like it. You know, it's good. But uh, most people. The, like it just adds something right and, and especially when it when it's when it's just kind of encapsulate a, a like a well-balanced meal with the umami with the sweet with the sour with the you know we got everything balanced you add a little bit of smoke and people are like i don't know why but i love this um all right well maybe we should give a little introduction to what's being passed around so first we had the ivan's chai so that's fireweed that is one of the most it's in the name. It's a weed. It's so abundant. It is yeah. everywhere. One of those beautiful, picturesque mountain scenes with the purple flowers. That's fireweed. It gets its name because it's one of the first plants to come up after a fire. And uh, there's many stages that it can be consumed as right in the earliest spring, just as a shoot. It's like asparagus. Mm -hmm. You can eat it raw. You can steam it. Then as the leaves come out, the young leaves are fantastic as a, you know, in salads. The flowers are great in salads. Yeah. And the method that uh, Alex has done here is we harvest those leaves and then we kind of, uh, first we let them wilt a little bit and then you roll them, like just massage them, them, just to bruise them, get the juices flowing, and then you ferment them. And this is kind of a similar process to how green teas turned into black tea. And then through that fermentation, that oxidization process, it develops all these other kind of unique uh, floral uh, flavor compounds to it. So that's going around in the jar just to smell. And then what do we have here, Alex? That's being so this, is, so, so this is the Montreal smoked beets. And on top of it, we put some bees bomb that we that we harvested last year. And bees bomb is, is like oregano's cousin, you know, like yeah. it, and, and it grows all around what the, the, the prairies. Um, yeah. So I just grab the. The could, flowers could be described as wild oregano, but it has carvacol, which is the same uh, essential oil as oregano, and it's powerful. Like just yeah. one of those oh, little yeah. flower stamens is like boom. Yeah, uh, yeah. So really good for, and also for nutrition of qualities, also for for coughs and colds and things like that. Oil, yes, oil of oregano. In fact, Minarda or the wild bee balm into honey. That's a great yeah, like winter cold flu remedy. And actually, I do have um, over there. I do have a few vinegars. Oh yeah, let's grab those. Um, do you want to grab those? Because because uh, I took so we so we took all we harvested all the, the flowers, which is I'll get into color because color is another very good one to be cooking with with, with color. That's a, that's a huge principle. Well, it's dripping. So here is the 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 the, the bees bomb um, vinegar, right? And, and so. So everything has pigment, right? And pigments are all are all chemical constituents. Um, and, and so anthocyanin is, is is the one that really makes things purple. And and anthocyanin is great in, in varying degrees, uh, but that's what gives it that nice bright pink. When when introduced to an acid, it will turn very bright, you know. And and, and, and so that's the same thing as berries. Yes. So the question was, did, I, did we use an apple cider vinegar here? And yes, that, that is an apple cider vinegar. Um, if you wanted to preserve that color even more, you could use uh, like a right, white rice vinegar yeah. or mirin. Yeah. Uh, there's even, yeah, I think it's probably the best. And then it makes the color pop like super purple. Whereas the apple cider has got a little bit of a tinge to it itself. Uh, so it, it mutes it a little bit, but you can get a nice hopping pink. Yes, totally. Yeah. And then, and then, so also on that is spruce tips um, that we had just dried. 
So a lot of the time, you know, like rosemary, thyme, parsley, all of these are like, oh, they're just, they're in all cooking. You know, Mediterranean cooking is, is full of it. And the reason is, is because it was indigenous and, and wild around there, right? And, and it was, you know, same kind of flavor. We'll, we'll send this around. I mean, it's, it's different, right? But it's the same kind of idea. You know, we can use these herbs that we can, that, that, that grow. You know, these are the spruce tips that come out right, right before, you know, shoot out. And, and they're, they're, they're little buds and they're just, they're amazing to eat. Um, and, and we use them in a, in a variety of ways here. Um, My absolute favorite being the spruce tip soda. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Oh. Yeah, yeah, because it's got this, like, earthy. It's like the Mountain Dew of the Light Cellar. So yeah. that, that's, like. I think, well, it, it, from Russia, um, it, like, and, and I believe because, you know, like, like the, the way to, um, to, to, refer to a, a Russian person, you know, in, in like the forties and fifties with Ivan, you know, just like, like as a colloquialism. And so um, I think that's just Ivan's chai is, is, is like, you know, because Brit, the, the Brits would especially call, Oh, Ivan, you know, he'd refer to any Russian person or, or Russia as a whole would be Ivan. And, and so, you know, the chai, chai masala from, from India was very popular in, in there. And then, you know, Russians, but they, they'd hear about it because it, it's like, Fireweed is prolific in, in Russia as well, right? Because it's the same kind of terrain, same kind of climate. Yeah, yeah um, a lot of lost Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, would you look for that? Just, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we stir it again. So we're, we're going to send it around. So so one of the, the things that I kind of want to impart is... is um, is replacing because you got these flavor wheels, right? And, and if you can break down a dish, you know, like a like let's say, um, well, even Arnold, Arnold Palmer, which is traditionally green or like like black tea, made into iced tea and um, and lemonade, right? And so none of those things grow here. So what do we do? Well, we can replace it by finding the different things. So so this is just simply this is just brewed uh, fireweed tea. Uh, sea buckthorn as, as the sour and then the sweet is just uh, the honey you know and, and so I mix that that together and, and we have an Arnold Palmer that is a little bit more local you know because so so for me I'm I'm very passionate about local uh, like I, I think local is the way out of most of the, the problems that we face right and everyone's like oh the 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 supply chain is, is is crashing and a lot of our suppliers are like, well, not for us. You know, we, we can easily kind of get everything here. And, and so I, I try my best to, to have an ethos of, of 75% uh, local, you know, because I, like, I don't want to forsake it, you know, now. Like, like we have so many great things that, that, and powerful medicines that come, come to us. So, you know, it, it's like 100% local is just, it's, it's unattainable, I believe. Um, but you know, when we get, when we get into like 75%, then it's like, you know, it's not being like absolutely zealot about it, you know? And, and so uh, local just is, is absolute best. And we have so much at, at our disposal, you know, like, like vinegars are very good. And if we use the fermentation process, you know, we can, we can make vinegars very easily, you know, like we were making at, uh, at, a, at a restaurant I was working at, we, we were making through, because there's so many crab apples making uh, apple cider vinegar through through the crab apples and, and and so then we have access to all this sour and then you can preserve and all that the the, the one that that is a little bit tougher is the salt you know salt is, is one of those ones that we got to get in from this the sea and, and i think there's a little bit of salt flats in in saskatchewan but those are used for um industrial yeah industrial processes right but but so 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 it's there it's accessible but but the thing is is a lot of um it comes with a lot of, there is sacrifice to local, right? And then the main one is, is price, you know, because like a lot of these big companies get people with price. And, and, and the thing is, is that the value of something local is going to be way better because it is a nutrient. Um, it is a nutrient thing. Like, like if we're, if we're eating for pleasure, then we're not really, you know, like, like we're missing a lot of that. And that's why there's so much chronic illness is, is because, um, this in my, like, again, I'm not a biologist or anything like that, but I have like, like I, I've worked my whole life, um, you know, working life in, in the restaurant industry. 
And, uh, and, and I've seen, you know, the, like I've seen things, you know, where when we get in like halibut, for example, right. Like, like the, they can see that it's overfished because like, like I used to get halibut this big and then it went down to this, you know? And, and so there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, um, there's a, there's a lot of access to like white fish here. You know, like we have, we have uh, pike and pickerel up in the north, in, in the Northern lakes and, um, Oops. Uh, sorry, sorry, I just got to. Uh... Okay, Angela wants you to see the, the bottle up the Alberta Arnold Arnold Palmer. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we will. I, I think we will. Um, a little shot of Arnold. I need a shot, yeah. yeah. I, need, I need one. My blood sugar is. All right, so Alex is, uh, how long have you been here for now? A year. A year. Yeah. yeah. So he's responsible for a lot of the amazing recipes in the last year that you've seen. His creativity, his genius, and it just fits right with our philosophy of, and, you know, using local and using those like exceptionally amazing uh, ingredients. And superfood, you know, like, and that is uh, like, like, you know, I, I came in here last year. I was like, you know, kind of looking for a job. And then you know, why don't you apply here? And I was like, you know, it had never uh, occurred to me. I was like, it's great. You know, it's a great fit. And, and because that, that to me is, is the greatest thing is, is, is food is nutrition, right? And, and if we get our diet nice and balanced, most of the time, a lot of these, these ailments kind of start to kind of to wash away, right? Because yeah, that, that's, um, how was it? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We're, we're sorry for those that online that, uh, can't, yeah. can't taste, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Tastes sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's got that, that, that hit of uh, the, the sea buckthorn, the honey. Yeah. And it didn't heat the honey at all. Just everything was blended. You know? and, yeah. 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 So it's the fireweed tea kind of underlying that. And then we used to have amazing supply of sea buckthorn. You guys might remember it the soul berry. That puree, wow, it was out of Manitoba. It was fantastic. Um, but then during the pandemic, they lost their manufacturing facility. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was really odd. Like, they just folded, you know. They, I guess, yeah, whatever it was, you know, they no longer exist. So, uh, we do have, we don't have the fireweed tea, but the sea buckthorn is now, we can get it in uh, the boreal berry, it's called. Yeah, and it's a, it's a frozen product. But so this year it is my mission. Like, yes. like I want to, I want to get a line of Ivan Shy at least for a, for a little bit, right? Like a seasonal kind of thing that we could get. I don't want to promise it yet, but yeah, it, it is one of those things. You know, get out in the woods, you know, and and do it. You know, Kananaskis is just full of it. Like like especially uh, on Route sixty six, you know, Highway forty. Those all have huge access to to it, especially when you go to Crown Land. And, you yeah, know, we, we have. In fireweed, again, it's a weed. It's yeah. everywhere. And yeah. uh, so it's one of those things you know, I, I'm going to like up my game because it's one of those challenges. Like I'm out all the time. Lana and I were out yesterday and uh, with a class with Julie Walker and, and wild harvesting and everything's got a season and one has to be on it in terms of uh, gathering and preparing. So fireweed is going to be on top of the list and uh, more yeah. bee bomb and Mardarda. So Angela online was just, Wanted a quick clar clarification. Did you use sea buckthorn berries or the powder or what? Sea buckthorn berries, but the powder can also work. But yeah. I just blended the, the berries with the honey, a uh, little bit of water, and then strained it because the seeds are are in there. But the seeds are also highly nutritious in, in with, because uh, they have omega sevens in them actually, which is like pretty rare in, in a plant. Um, and, and just a great balance of omega three and, and things like that. So. Yeah, Dan, you had a question. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so totally, the, the yeah. request was how to. I'm sure you would like this as well. How to take the fireweed and prepare it into the Ivan's chai? Well, we'll do a video on that for sure. Yeah. So midsummer, wait for yeah. it. Okay, Donna. Oh, amazing. Yeah. 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 You could. I mean, it's going to be a different flavor, but yeah. So I'll just repeat the question oh, for yeah. everybody online. Yeah. So the question was, could you use, uh, we're talking a lot about sea buckthorn, but there's a very similar one uh, called uh, buffalo berry. 
or silver leaf, silver thorn. There's a different terminology for it. The Latin name is Chaperdia argentia and uh, grows prolifically around here. We're just kind of right on the edge of where it grows. If you go down to Lethbridge, if you go any further east and south, it's like in every river valley. And it's amazing. It's my favorite berries around here. It does, as Alex was saying, a slightly different flavor, but it could be used interchangeably. And uh, where a sea buck there is an orange berry, it's like, it's red. Uh, yeah. 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 It looks very similar. It does it look similar. Has, has the thorns. And yeah. All. And there is also, there, there is also uh, like another buckthorn that's, that, that's around. Yeah. And, and there is another buckthorn thorn that is red. And, and maybe that is the, the silver. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and those, those are very similar but at the same time they don't have like the the pigments really do make the flavor a little bit uh different right and so so that is a, a big one and, and i did want to touch on 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 a thing that you know like like a, like a chef's job really and, and there's there's so much like oh chefs is these these great things they're, they're just conduits to, to good producers right like, like for me a chef's job is to make the, the, these things that grow really well here um a, a very we're gonna, yeah so so i've I've type 1 diabetes so sometimes my brain gets a little foggy and when my blood sugar is low and for whatever reason i get nervous talking and then my blood sugar gets all a little yeah. i'm a chef i'm not a, i'm not a, i'm not a, i'm not a public speaker so i like to be like i'm an introvert oh yeah i should just like screwed it in uh but but so it's taking things that we love, you know, and so a really good example is guacamole, right? And, and so at my, my previous restaurant, we had the five foie gras of vegan. It was a vegan vegetarian restaurant. There's the five foie gras of veganism, right? Because a lot of the time people are like, oh, I'm not eating animal. I'm, I'm it's good, you know, but, but the, the problem is, is that um, there's a lot of human suffering that goes into a lot of these huge high market commoditized food sort of foodstuffs, right? And because people are looking on, on the global side, it's like, oh, I want to be like Paris or whatever, you know, like, but uh, we, we need to look into our backyard more. Right. And, and so a big one was avocados is like, you know, we don't source avocados. I don't serve avocados, you know, like, and I'm not saying they're bad, but it just for, for me personally, you know, there, there's a lot of cartel interference and things like that. Right. So avocados can have a price tag and it, it is human suffering not animal so well and animal suffering because when you're when you're high cropping things you know like there's a lot of disturbances and i, I mean that's why regenerative farming is just such a great uh great thing but anyway so so we we take uh green peas and make a guacamole with that and uh you know and, and it's the same flavors you know take and, and with, with a little bit of apple cider vinegar and, and, and the, but the spices like cumin, coriander, cilantro, you know, it can have, it, it, it's nearly like, like it's, it's almost the same thing. So, and, and, and there, that, 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 that's a big one. Um, the, the, there's a lot of the, like, we can even, and, and mushrooms, I'm, I'm not going to touch on mushrooms a lot because we're doing the mushroom symposium and, uh, there but mushrooms are another just amazing thing and we have we have so much in our backyard and we have a lot of producers that are doing uh, like lion's mane oyster and um and even shiitake here in our backyard and, and so there, there's a lot of uh there's a lot of possibility with that right and, and we also have uh, a lot of producers that are doing a lot of these international techniques with local flavors and that's really what i you know and, and that's why you know, if we have the balance, right. And, and, and especially with like the big one now is with animal, you know, because for a long time, everyone was like, Oh, they're so bad. You know, and it's like, no, if they're run properly, you know, like anything can be bad at, at a big scale, you know, like, because then you, you have to hit margins and things like that. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think any other questions coming up for anybody online or in person questions do you have? Yeah. Oh, oh, for spring. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, uh, he mentioned one, you know, fireweed shoots are, are amazing. Uh, they're great. And then, and then the, we do have a little bit of wild asparagus that, that, that kicks around. And so, but the problem is, is that, you know, spring in calendar sense is a little different than spring in the, <laughs> you know, like we're, yeah. we're almost getting into, we're almost getting into summer when spring approaches. So, but, <laughs> okay. uh, cause technically it's the equinox. 
yeah, no. tomorrow is 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 it full on at three p.m. But uh, we won't really see spring ourselves. We we can feel it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be a little later. I mean, spruce tips. Spruce tips are another. That's an amazing one. Um, but again, that's probably gonna be June. Yeah, uh, a lot of these things. So wild asparagus, spruce tips, fireweed, uh, dandelion, dandelion, of course. Dandelion, yeah, dandelion, a lot of those spruce, early greens yeah. like chickweed, uh, pine pine pollen. Fiddleheads, they're not so more, much. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're a little more coasty and need a little bit more coastal. But we do get some nettles. There, yes. there are patches of nettles. There's spots again, not as abundant as in BC, but uh, nettle can be another good one. I'm really going to explore pollens this year. Yes. Actually, I've been into pine pollen for a long time, uh, and then the last couple of years, I'm like, oh, what about spruce pollen? Mm. Yeah, why have. not? <laughs> um, we have over up on the, the top shelf there to there's the right some preserve uh, spruce buds. Now they're yeah, bring that over. Get them at the very right time. I mean, it's Excellent. like there's a weak window where where they're they're because they, they get a little bit grainy and and coney. But if you get them right before, see they kind of look like strawberries. I'll pass it around. So what this is, this is the male catkin, and it's the the pollen producing uh, part of the plant comes out in the spring uh, to then fertilize the female, which are the cones. Um, and so pine pollen, they, they get huge. Like they're really easy to see harvest. They're loaded with pollen. For a spruce, like these are actually really, really big. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's like the nail of your pinky is kind of about the size. Um, and, you know, they're sort of harder to pick. There's less pollen in there, but they're just as amazing. So we've been working with pickling them the last few years. Uh, and it's it's an amazing vegetable spring yeah. vegetable and just a powerhouse yes yeah really good question uh so the the male catkins that contain the pollen it's best to pick them just before they open so that was a question of whether you pick them before or after as soon as they open, it'll take anywhere from a few hours to a day or two at the most and they've released all their pollen it can happen like just yeah. like that, you'll see like yellow scattered everywhere. That's that very nutritious pollen. So we like to pick them just before they open because they still contain all that pollen, but they're ripe enough uh, that it's it's ready to be picked. And uh, I mean, talk about sustainable. The most common conifer tree around you'll see throughout Calgary is spruce. They're everywhere. And there's no way we're going to get all the way up and down every single tree, um, you know, so just picking a few. Go, yeah, go to town. Is, I mean, it, it is 100% uh, a sustainable that, food. In that and regard. that is my, my, my goal this year is to have enough pine pollen for, so I can, for, for me, for to last a year. Because pine pollen is just one of those like powerhouse foods and, and sprinkle it on things. I mean, we got some vinegar. Because even after they open, I like to, to put them in here just to get the kind of the last remnants. You know, you use everything, right? And so, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, pickled in vinegar. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But that's a good, good question. So yeah. these ones have been pickled in vinegar. You, we also do it in where we actually ferment them and they pickle themselves in the salt water. So so lacto fermentation. You want to smell it. Yeah. Okay. So that is, that is powerful. No. All right. So what other, what other kind of spring, spring foods, spring vegetables? I'm trying to think. There's a lot of, uh, like I mean, shoots and shoots, shoots are really the the thing for spring. You know, it's like yeah. like what, what on the walks that that Malcolm does. Um, a lot of times talks about the, where the energy in the plant is. You know, and that's right. where a lot of the that's where a lot of the flavor is going to be. You know, and, and so spring is great for like leaves and shoots. Summer is is abundant with you know berries and 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 fruits and and things like that, and also with fall and then in winter. That's more of the, the preserve, you know, and, that, and that's seasonally eating is, is a lot of the time using the preserved foods that we have. And then spring is also the tail end of those preserved foods. Yeah. And the energy of that carries forward. I was doing a plant walk uh, with, with, with Julie, actually, last year. Uh, we were, it was in August and it was about maybe about the 15th. 
and again, our seasons are very, you know, different, shall we say, than, than the calendar. It was like, here we are, we're still summer. And uh, she's like, oh, I'm just feeling that transition. It was like August 15th, wow, oh, transition. And, and it's like true. It's like that first kind of cold morning comes in, middle of August, and you can feel it. And so she's just going right with the seasons. And I was like, I'm not, I was like, take it. <laughs> I was taking pine pollen every day and I was like, I'm feeling the spring. I'm like, I'm ready to go here. So that's another kind of technique of, you know, when we capture these foods, like it, it holds an energetic, it holds a power that we can kind of call on uh, anytime. Totally. So, so a couple more questions online. Uh, Sherry Lynn asks, uh, do you do anything with willow? Willow? No, actually, you know what? I haven't. What's that? Sorry. Furniture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah, but um, willow is actually uh, the, the the white willow bark with the, the salic acid is, is one of the first pain relievers, and that actually started the whole pharmaceutical industry. You didn't know that, so so it was it was because the the same. So if anybody knows how they make cocaine, you know, and a lot of people have seen you know in the movies and all that, right? That's a pharmaceutical process, and that's how they do most pharmaceuticals. That's how they get the 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 pinpointed constituent is through through petrochemical process right and and so the first one was was salic acid and it was taken from the white willow bark and then john d rockefeller actually started the first um pharmaceutical company because he's like oh we can't patent natural like anything natural but we can patent th this you know this pinpointed thing and so we got pharmaceutical companies and that's why they're still here today is anyway that's uh, that's my tidbit about willow <laughs> yeah um so another question is spruce tip jam a thing and just to clarify we've been talking about the spruce catkins the male pollen cones that what we are passed around originally was the spruce tips that fresh green shoot that comes out in the spring mm -hmm. the needles yeah so is spruce tip jam a thing is it a thing in your world you it's make not in my world spruce like, tip like jellies add it to, but like there does need to be something like I, I i when i think about jelly i think of like the whole thing like like cook down you know and, and that could be a thing but i've i've never actually done it like we add it to we add it to to berries and, and fruits but not as itself but that that could be a thing where totally some um, people do it for sure yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. like not a jam Jelly. Yeah, yeah, we're in, in the sugar, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and that, yeah, yeah, totally. And that would be to to, to steep it in into something. Uh, and actually, there is one thing that you can do is you can actually steep it in in sugar, and and the sugar will will all go to liquid, and then there you have. Um, I, I think that would be the process. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Another question over here, Anya. Uh, but like springtime, what are your go-to mushrooms maybe that might be popping up? Or is that a new question? No, that's an amazing question. Yeah. So the question was uh, springtime again on that theme. What about the mushrooms? And is there anything that you reach for in the spring for mushrooms? Uh, well, I mean, morels are, are a good sign. But again, that's like, like yeah, that's like June. That's like yeah. your, your June. And so I've got a rhyme. So how you know when morels will be ready. When the Saskatoon blooms, you'll find those shrooms. That's the time. Yeah. yeah. So. so again, June, basically. Yeah. And then into July, you can begin to find oyster mushrooms. Yeah. Those are awesome. And they'll continue through the season. But most of the mushrooms end up coming late summer into autumn. But uh, morels are your early ones. And then oysters. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, oh, spruce. I think my father uh, in the you know, in, in, you know, in the witch, but, uh, my grandfather was going to take sap out of school. Ah, and yes. Need to chew it. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, great. Uh, right. Totally. Okay. Awesome. So the comment in the question. Uh, about spruce, you know, he's mentioned his grandfather would take the the sap from spruce, and then you can like chew on it, and it acts as a nice little gum. Uh, it is amazing. Uh, it's tough to work with culinarily because it, it's so resinous and get, we get very sticky. But you can do extractions of it in oil or alcohol. We'll pull it. Typically, it's used a lot topically. Um, 
Yeah, mix it with honey. Yeah, Yeah, another thing. But it's different than uh, the maple sap. So like the, it's technically described as like a pitch or a resin. It is the sap. It's it's basically, it forms as a response to a wound of the tree, and it gets very sticky and hard and resinous. And it's a little bit different than than maple or birch in the sense. Yeah, yeah, totally. And uh, maple's unique in that it. It is quite sweet and you can take the maple water and it's about a 25 to one. So you take 25 liters of fresh maple, we call it water or the the fresh sap that's running in the spring. And you reduce that down to one liter of maple syrup. Uh, Birch is another tree that's used commonly and that's a hundred to one ratio. So it takes a hundred liters to create one liter. That's, it's not as, as sweet. That's like pretty far north. It is. Yeah. Like when? when we have it uh yeah but birch is amazing yeah. too as yeah i forgot to bring so i want to bring some out because that's a great sweetener yeah so in that process of reducing it is heat so eventually they're boiling off the water and concentrating down the sugars yeah in both birch and maple syrup ah really good question could you consume any tree sap i can't I better not say yes, yeah. but I can't think of any off the top of my head where you you wouldn't want to. Maybe the yew tree. Well, yeah, yeah, yew like, tree, uh, like resin. Yeah, like aspen will be really bitter. And there's actually you yeah. can actually have uh, some something of of a coniferous bread. There's in between the bark and the 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 wood, the live wood. There's a there's a a layer. That you can actually scrape and that it has like like it, it has protein it has everything and it's like a survival thing but i would love to cook yeah with it, just cook with it well in fact you didn't know this but right when you started uh lynn had brought in some uh pine bark sourdough crackers oh nice and, oh. I, and I got to taste one. Oh, <laughs> so great just with the, uh, 45 minutes ago i was eating pine bark crackers yeah, right. yeah. so there's a lot we can do with the trees yeah so, the hemlock spruce does anybody know is that right yeah yeah there's okay yeah i know in bc they have hemlock yeah yeah but i haven't seen it in alberta yeah Yeah. the boreal herbal yeah. yeah yeah cool yeah which is a great book that's is that a the boreal book? herbal yeah. by beverly gray yeah she's got the jams and the jellies and the crackers and all that stuff in there yeah okay well we better wrap it up yeah. we're going to take 15 minutes to kind of switch it over um so our next presentation at four o'clock will be mixology as medicine craft cocktails and cocktails with herbal ingredients so you want to stick around for that it'll be on the similar theme Let's give Alex a round of applause for sharing.